Welcome back, travelers, to a rant about Vivian Reed. Now, uh, this isn't technically a legendary lore, but it's following legendary lore because it's connected to Vivian and we talk, just talked about Ikoria. And I mean, I just kind of want to get this off my chest. I want to express this to the world, get other people's views on it. I really hope that by the end of it, you guys can kind of see my point of view. We're going to start it off by kind of giving you the base form of what Vivian started out as. So Vivian was from a plane called Scala. And the whole idea behind Scala was that Nicol Bolas was controlling it. He was like constantly manipulating it and, and just constantly tearing it apart kind of thing, right? And eventually he got bored and he decided, you know what, this isn't useful anymore. I'd already taken everything I can out of it. So I'm just gonna destroy the plane. I'm just gonna destroy the entire plane. Well, Vivian didn't quite like that. And neither any of the other people that were on this plane. There were two groups. You had the Smaragdi and the Nura, which so there was basically like a group of rangers and a group of druids. So there was literally just green. It was a plane of green people, right? And so mm -hmm. when, as the world was ending because of Nicol Bolas, they joined forces to create a special artifact called the Arcbow. And the reason they created this Arcbow was so that it could contain the life of every creature that has ever been on Scala. So it's like, it's an arc like a Noah's Ark kind of deal. That's why it's called the Ark Boat. And Vivian's spark ignites right after they've all lost and the forest is in flames and everything is terrible. And she planes walks away with the Ark Boat. And so while she's uh, like learning it and she's trying to figure it out, she's able to like create like little versions of each thing. And they're very, like very weak, wispy kinds of things, right? And she begins to uh, encounter new creatures and then she adds them to the bow, which we already know is basically just full of souls. So she's taking their souls. She's and, stealing souls. Yeah, from these creatures. And she's kind of exploring and learning all about these different kinds of beasts. This right? is where the original sociopath thing came from. Well, see, even then, not so much. For me, I saw this as a sign of a character who has trauma and has is experienced a, uh, like the the ends justify the means mentality because her whole deal is that she hated Nico Bolas but it went beyond that it goes very far beyond that see her main thing is that she's able to empower creatures in addition to using her bow right mm -hmm. and as she's traveling across the plains we have this one thing and it was at this point that I realized something that was problematic on the plane of Ixalan, we have a special story about the royal menagerie of Lanu, right? Vivian visits this plane. There's a lot more to the story, but I'm just going to give you the basics of it. There's a ton of vampires here and a ton of normal, innocent humans. And Vivian gets really upset that they have, a, they basically, she's upset they have a zoo. Okay. And so she eventually basically uncages the menagerie and murders the entire town with these monsters. Is it at Despite, this point where you start having a gripe? It's at this point that I saw the direction she could go and I was like, oh, that's interesting. She's a because, villain. Well, that's the thing, is that she's a righteous villain. A self-righteous villain who believes what she's doing is right. We don't get a lot of that, especially in green. A mono green villain is super cool to me. I love that idea. The PETA, like I said in a previous episode, of mm -hmm. a person who believes that animal lives are more important than human lives. And so this whole, this this path is super like laid out. And it, it, it does have like a slight spin to like, oh, Vivian's the hero. She saved these animals. And you don't have to worry about it. But it's so obviously evil what she's doing. And so I just saw that as because it's from her like from her perspective kind of thing. And that's the reason it, it, it portrays it that way. And so that's what I was anticipating. As we went forward, we were going to see Vivian start off as this individual who has a connection to monsters and becomes one herself. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what happens to Luca. I was going to say, just like Luca took this path. Luca exactly. took this exact path. He took that exact path. He created a bond with the creature. And then he tried to kill everyone. 
And so then we get to Ravnica and a whole bunch of stuff happens with her there. I won't go into that. And again, this is not a legendary lore. I'm just talking about how much I despise the way they treated her character. Because then we get to Ikoria and she's seen as this wise individual. This hero, this hero, heroic hero. That's what I was going to say. She's a hero. During uh, the War of the Spark, she's seen as like the one of the, like a great ally to the cause. She even helps Chandra during the Forsaken novel in her their hunt for Vraska. And no point is Vivian's actions seen as bad by anyone. And these are normal people. This would be like if we decide to create a character like the Punisher who goes around just slaughtering innocents. And Spider-Man's like, hey, buddy, how you doing? Oh, that's a lot of blood. <laughs> and like, just keeps going about the day. What a chili dog? And so like- I don't like, know if Spider-Man's the chili dog guy. Okay, Sonic the Hedgehog meets Ghost Rider. You get what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get to the whole thing with Ikoria. And it's the perfect opportunity for Vivian to go down this villain route when she finds all these monsters and these humans, and she talks about how much she hates the humans throughout the entire thing. And then at the end of it, they have her working with the humans to stop Luca because he's enslaving the monsters. They try to give her this redemption arc that's never really portrayed as a redemption arc. It's just seen as a thing that she happens to do. And I know in the case of Nisa, she was an elf supremacist at first and super racist and was like, elf power, all that stuff. And they changed her because of like PR and all that stuff, right? But with Vivian... I just imagine no Gideon having a meeting with her just like, so, you're going to be the green of the Gatewatch. We need to <laughs> talk about your views a little bit. <laughs> your views. Now, that's the thing. With Nisa, it kind of, like, it's, it's a hard retcon, right? It's basically mm -hmm. an entirely different character. Just After like, oh, she's this elf supremacist. She hates everybody. She only likes elves. Forget all of you. To, oh, now she, she's she a likes person. girls. Yeah, now she, she's a land person who doesn't quite understand how emotions work. So that whole idea behind Nisa kind of got to let it go because they made that decision. They made a hard retcon. It's very obvious it was a retcon. But in the case of Vivian... It seems like they set up this great idea for a story of a character with an incredibly powerful artifact that they only know how to use and a righteous path that leads them down down darkness. She's a she's a terrorist. She unleashed an entire like there were dinosaurs in that menagerie. <laughs> she straight up Jurassic Worlded an entire what is the deal with that? <laughs> And she's she's a good guy. And so I'm believing, still holding out hope, that she's actually going to wind up becoming a villain. But every time they bring her in, she does more horrific things, says more terrible things, and she's still considered a good guy. And that's where I, I just, that's my rant about Vivian. She has so much potential as a villain and they squander it. And that's what I find so bad about her. They're having a lot of trouble with their green, it seems. Just like, okay, so Garuk's a green black for a bit. So Nisa needs to be the green good guy. So, so let's so retcon her. her entirely. Yeah. It's like, okay, so Nisa's playing with land now. So we need a different green good guy, but let's make her kind of twisted. Yeah. And then another green guy, Zhang Yang Wu. Oh, let's he's forget a, about him. He's got a rock rough. That's all we got on him. <laughs> like, who's that guy? Oh, he's Chinese. Okay. He has a puppy. Okay. The puppy's a rock. And, and that's, that's, that's another thing is I feel like uh, with some of these things, they're kind of token characters. And I mean, it's a cool concept for Zhang Yang Wu. Let's just, like, he can bring yeah. his creature with him because it's a rock. But that's what I mean. Like, a token character is in, we needed to have some Chinese characters that weren't Narset. Who's closer to Mongolian, maybe. Yeah. And so they just kind of threw them in there. Kind of like with the whole representation thing of uh, of Alesha. Mm -hmm. They eventually got it right with um, with Nico, but 
it feels like they make characters without thinking about what these characters are going to be like and what they're going to do. And like, okay, we need this. Okay, let's just make that into that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Like Koth. Koth is a crazy cool character who is a Volshock human who has African American traits or African traits, I suppose would be the better way to put it. He looks, he's a black guy and he's really cool. And he his is. ethnicity has nothing to do with his character. Similarly, Lord Wingrace, same idea. They have various traits added to his character that have been re like retroactively applied to him to make him look a certain way, and act a certain way. Um, but like they're not their character. They're a cool representation while still being a character in their own right. Exactly. It's kind of like when in, in old movies where you had the gay character and mm -hmm. their whole deal was he was the single gay person in the entire film and he had to be flamboyant and at least do a few things with his hands like this. And that was that was what their idea of representation was. He was a gag. Obviously, it's not a gag in these cases. This this is this this rant has transformed. I mean, even the old movies, they got that right with uh, Beauty and the Beast and making a Gaston's dude gay. Oh yeah, Lefou. Lefou, there we go. Yes. So, but yeah, that's that's a whole other rant about the representation of magic and how I do think they're going down the right path as far as like trying to get there. It's a very slow starter. But back to Vivian. I think they need another green character so that way they can finally push Vivian to the villain side. And that's the thing. Is that they're afraid to make those decisions. When they released Negan in the uh, the Walking Dead, that little Walking Dead secret lair, uh -huh. they got backlash for having Negan in that thing. Do you know why, Joe? Why? Because of the things he does in the show. Because he's a terrible person. They know he they, had Nico Bolas, right? They, <laughs> they met Nico Bolas. Nico Bolas would touch Negan and make him disappear. <laughs> Nico Bolas is like, I hope we got your pooping pants on because we're about to poop your pants. <laughs> <laughs> like, just to be fun, Nico Bolas would like conjure up a giant spiked bat and turn him into paste with one hit. Yeah, that's, that's they the have way worse characters. They have Tybalt and Oko and Tybalt's basically Negan on overdrive. And see, but that's the thing, is that they're afraid to do these leaps because with the thing with Negan is like, he's so brutal with the way he does things. And if you look at a lot of the villains in Magic, they're not seen as these, as like, they don't have those same kind of arcs. Negan's a very complex character. Like he has a good reason to have become so evil, to have been so twisted. Not like a good moral reason, but like a re like an actual good backstory, like well written, and he has a redemption arc involved in his story. So all of that comes together, to, and they release this character, and he's an interesting character. But people don't like what he's done, how he's been handled, and all this stuff. And I think Wizard is just afraid to pull the trigger. Tybalt, Devil Boy, likes pain. That's it. Oko. Hot guy. Likes to mess with people. That's it. Nico Bolas. Evil dragon from the old stories. So we already have all that lore based for him. So we can make him as bad as we want. But he's also, even though he's the smartest thing in the universe, he's really, really dumb and arrogant. And so he's easy to kill. Tibble, you bop him on the head and he runs away. Oko, you destroy his crystal and he runs away. But if you made something like Vivian, she would actively go to a plane and destroy it. She's not like a Phyrexian who has no sense of self. The Phyrexians are a disease. The Eldrazi are a force of nature. Vivian would be one of the most hardcore villains we've ever had. She'd be a very hardcore villain because she would just be about genocide, specifically genocide of the human race. Basically not even humans, sentient races. Merfolk, she she elves, wouldn't even want humans. more power. In it. That was Bullas' downfall, just like, I can get all their sparks. Ah, maybe taking them, them all on at once was a bad idea. Ah, I'm dead. Yeah, Vivian, Vivian would, would just that. be like, don't you want more power? Pfft, no, I'm going to kill Think that. Think about how great of a villain she would be on Ravnica. Oh, yeah. A world of just pure city, and she shows up and goes on a rampage. If she truly put all of that work in there, she could even find like some other extra like thing to add to it like maybe like a super quiver or something but you get the idea of this is a person who actively hates civilization in a game 
with civilizations as the main setting. This isn't something along the lines of like a Tarzan game where we're already on the same page of jungle good, man bad, fight man, Clayton get hung and eaten by Jaguar at the same time. This is Uh not that scenario. It doesn't make sense. Hopefully we do see it in the future, but we'll see what happens with Wizards. I feel yeah. like they're going to bring back Phyrexia before they do. They're already bringing back Phyrexia, yeah, so yeah, we're back. Have to, going to have to get into Joe, it later. Joe, just take it away, take it away before I keep going. Take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away now. And you take your mouse to that subscribe button and that like button and go ahead and catch us next time. We're going to be playing some game or, yeah, we're going to be playing some game. Yeah.